Welcome to another episode of the Johto Cast, episode 150. I am Joe, and joining me this time is Kurt. Hey, hey! And if you could see him, you'd see how happy he is to be here. It's Leo. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. What's you been playing, real quick? What What you been playing, Leo? Um, I played some Legion recently. What you been playing, Kurt? <laughs> I've been playing, reading the Legion rulebook. Oh. Does that count? Um, I think that's more of like a an endeavor than a <laughs> like playing. I don't think that fits the definition of play. They just need to add like achievements to rule books, right? <laughs> so like you have a progression mechanic. You've read all the core keywords. <laughs> Later when they can add eye tracking. Yeah, make sure you, you've actually read the whole rule book before that's what, you're allowed that's to what play. You need, you need to add gamification to Legion Quick Guide. Yeah, okay. It'll track every time like you get a little achievement that says, oh, you've looked at the rule book 50 times yeah. and you you've read you've read every entry under the letter a <laughs> and and you can get like loot boxes if if you donate <laughs> you can like yeah. you can like change the 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 theme of the site you can yeah get rare, rare skins for the site yeah. this, this month <laughs> only <laughs> uh, you can also you can also you can also buy the skins if you send money to joe through yeah, we can, the, uh... the, the, through the co- coffee link at the bottom of the page. If you subscribe to the season pass, you get access to um, when new rules updates come out. You get access to them a week before everybody else. Ooh. Everyone else has to wait a week before they can read the updated rules on the website. <laughs> yeah, they gotta <laughs> still use the PDF. I've been playing Legion. Um, still doing have, the world's practices. Uh, yeah, I've started to lose hope at doing well at worlds after playing Chris so many times because I can't well, ever beat him. Maybe but, it's like so. So for work, I I I, I took it. Uh, I I got a certification for for work here recently, and like I was doing all these practice tests, and I was like at best getting like 60 percent on these practice tests like usually getting like 50 percent um and like the day of my test that my test was scheduled kept creeping closer and closer and so i was all like well fuck i'm not gonna get this but I, whatever at least the the company is paying the 200 dollars to take this test not me um uh but then i took the test and i got like 80 percent on the actual test it was just Maybe Chris, you know, he acts all humble, but he's, you know, maybe he's just really like a world caliber player and you don't know. Oh, it. that's, I do know it. Everybody knows it. Every, everybody knows that Chris is just averse to competition and that environment. Like everybody agrees that if he went, he would, you know, make top four or whatever, but he mm-hmm. just doesn't want to do that. And so did you, just... did you see the, the top four? <laughs> At LVO, were all either current members or former members of the Fifth Trooper podcast. <laughs> I did nice. see that. We got to do that someday. <laughs> the four of us, hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people, they listen Evan's to Evan's just got to learn how to play Legion. They, people listen to us and how competitive we are, and they say, why aren't they, you know, make, taking these top spots? They talk a big game. <laughs> I, my, my current list is Cad Bane and Maul, which I, I got a game in against somebody who wasn't Chris, and it went much better. So I got my hopes back up, or at least <laughs> it felt nice to not Chris get destroyed by round two. It's like taking off your weighted yeah. uh, clothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I've played anything else. I did get my hands on a copy of Battle at Sarlacc's Pit. Mm. Uh, thanks to our buddy Dan, who picked it up for me at Bookman's. I haven't opened it yet. I was mm. thinking I might actually do an unboxing. For, especially for because it's like a busted who aren't up aware, For listeners who aren't aware, this is a, 
a, an old Star Wars board game from the 80s came out uh, be... right after Return of the Jedi. Yep, it's kind of like a little 3D sail barge that sits over a 3D Sarlacc pit, and you knock the little minis in the hole. Um, the minis are hideous, but <laughs> it's like a busted up box, and it was the price tag was as it said, like as is. So I'm curious if there's any components missing, or if it's just the cardboard box that's the problem. So we'll see. But I don't see, think I'm playing anything else. I could have sworn you already had that game and that we already did a video about it. Am, am I just thinking about like the wrong YouTube channel? Mm, I know yes. I've watched videos he's got, of people he's playing got a it. a bunch of other ones. Yes. I did not just forget. I owned a copy of this game. This game was one <laughs> of my like, uh, I don't know. What's, what's like a level below a white whale. It's like almost Your a white sperm whale. whale. <laughs> it was my sperm whale. <laughs> and we got it. Um okay, but uh this week we are this week I say that like we put out a podcast every week. Uh this time we're talking about Microsoft SharePoint. No, Shatterpoint. Yeah, sounds right. Oh, oh. Yeah. We 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 could. You know, that was uh we're talking I, about Star Wars Shatterpoint from Atomic Mass Games. Uh, since we last talked about the game, there has been they did an unboxing of the core box on a stream. They did a little painting stream of terrain, and all of the products are now up on the Asthma Day website for pre-order slash pre-order through your local game store. I think we should uh, talk about what was talked about on their unboxing stream real quick, and then we can just go through each of these products on the store page and uh, say what we think about them. First off, the core set is going to cost $164.99 American. Which is um, a little bit more than I think we were expecting, but... Yeah, it wasn't the... I don't remember how much the Prices Protocol core was, but I think it was a little less than that. Uh, I think it, it is currently listed as $100. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say it was a lot less than that. I, 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 I was pretty sure it was 100 bucks. Yeah, um, although for it does, you there is a lot in that box, and it's a big box. On the stream, the box is a lot taller than the Crisis Protocol box. Um, yeah, there's definitely the, a fair number of more minis, like, I don't know, 50%-ish more minis. Yeah, Maybe even so double, there, depending on how you count. Um, 16 units in the core set, all with one character per base, except the B1s, which have, like, three little guys on one base. So, basically... Uh, 18 minis if you want to count the B1s as separate minis, but 16, um, which is. I think there's two units of B1s. Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be 20? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's two things of B1, sorry. Yeah. And it comes um, with terrain, I, I think more terrain than Crisis Protocol came with, right? Bigger terrain? Yes. Yeah, it come, the terrain it comes with is pretty substantial. Which is and cool. Um, it comes with four pre-made squads to easily start playing. I'm reading off their little summary that they put out themselves. Um, they confirmed on the stream that players will be able to mix and match villains and heroes to create their own squads, much like Crisis Protocol. Mm -hmm. There's no like good guy, bad guy list building restrictions. Um, which So we had talked about this as a possibility a while back, and now that it's been confirmed that you could mix and match heroes and villains. How do you guys feel about that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't... It's. I guess it's nice to ha have a game that's not 100% that, like, you know, light versus Faction. dark. Yeah. You know, dichotomy that 99% of all Star Wars games are. So... You yeah, know, I, mean, I do I think... think I, 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 it's it's thematically it'll be a little bit weird, you know. But at the same time, um, you know, it's. I think this is meant to be. It's probably going to be given um, AMG's attitude on most things. I feel like this is going to be you know marketed more as a more casual game than like Legion is. So you know, I think they're going to just say you know like. You know, if you and your buddy 
are worried about the theme than just talk it out with each other and say, well, we're only going to play light versus dark or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I think it's a bit weird and it would not be my preference, but I don't have a problem with that being a thing. Might maybe if there like is a competitive scene that I end up going to all the time, I'll be like, Oh, there's another, you know, Anakin friends with Dooku team up, which feels just kind of weird to me. But, um, I mean, some of those could be kind of cool. Like there's, I don't know how many Clone Wars episodes where the bad guy and the good guy are like trapped together and they have to like temporarily join forces, right? Like if you oh, have yeah. I mean, they, you know, Asajj and Obi Wan teaming up or something, it could be kind of cool. Has, yeah, yeah, every yeah, cartoon yeah. Has an yeah uh, like but that. a lot of them would be weird. Like oh, they have, we have made B ones and clones working together, and I don't know weirder things, right? Yeah, I mean, they did say that they wanted to give the game the vibe of like a Saturday morning cartoon. Um, so. I think it's uh, it does it, it might have like design implications because if like you couldn't mix and match, you would never have to worry about light side guys' ability being a busted combo with dark side guys' ability because they could never mm-hmm. exist together. But now it it does make you know now since everybody can team up with everybody, you've got to look out for those combos more. I don't know if that's a big deal, but that is like one like thing to think about. Um, I think it's fine. It says it comes with a ton of terrain with multiple levels and ladders. Let's look at the terrain here. Yeah, if you look on the store page, at least the way they have it all arranged in the picture is sort of like a big T section, then with a couple um, taller towers at the, sticking up. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. the end of, of each of the arms on the T. Yeah, so there's um, like two. And the bridges like, look like they're, you know, like they just pop off so you can rearrange this kind yeah, of they, however yeah. he, you want. He he showed that off on the painting stream. All of the bridges and ladders are modular. So there's like two, I would say, small slash medium little structures and then two pretty small structures. And they're all sort of the same height where the bridges can connect to them in whichever way, way you want. So it is very modular. They did also, um, he mentioned that when they were building and designing this terrain, mm-hmm. they kept Legion in mind. Cause the games are different scales, so I'm not sure if it's maybe slightly smaller than it, the Shatterpoint scale or slightly bigger than the Legion scale, but they said they did keep Legion in mind when designing this. Yeah, well, I mean, down, I mean um, you can... You can for sure see, like on the stream, when they stood the one Legion mini next to the door, I mean, the door is definitely oversized for the, you know, I forget whether it was, was it like Boba it was Fett a Boba or something. Fett, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely, it looked sort of like, uh, like young, young, like teenage height type mm-hmm. person. You know, oh, I'd have to look again. Going. I thought he went about to the, height of the door but oh no no he was like he was like about like he was only like three quarters to maybe like four fifths as tall as the door you know i i I think um it will be unless there's like really they look fine by legion guys look fine by the doors and so if you can look fine by a door i think everything else you'll look fine by yeah i think i think this stuff will function absolutely fine as legion terrain which is uh I think cool because it could have been a lot more oversized to really mesh with the shatter point a little more. I think it'll still look fine with shatter point too. They seem to have like pulled off that little middle ground with the scale there. Do we know as far as like range ruler for Legion where it comes out? Is it going to be like, you know, a nice convenient just under height one type of thing or do we have any idea? No idea. I have no idea. I doubt that. I would, I would, it, Based on like the height of that mini and the, I I would say it looks like it's under height one. I mean, yeah, based I, on I the height of it. the mini that they had standing there, it looked like the catwalks would would be under height one. Here's my main question about the train for you guys: Does it look Star Warsy enough to you? What do you think? I, I think so. I In fact, I like the fact that it looks Star Wars without evoking a specific planet. 
You know what I'm saying? Like this is not this is not obviously coming from Tatooine or or something like that. This has that Star Wars aesthetic, but it could really fit in on on anywhere. Right. Yeah, there's no like moisture evaporators, which, you know, shout out to them for <laughs> resisting that. Like you know, you tape a moisture evaporator to the side of anything. You go, oh, it looks like Star Wars. But I agree with Leo. It it looks Star Warsy to me without, you know, it's not a Tatooine thing. It's not a Coruscant thing. It can be wherever you want it to be. Or paint it however, and you can say it's wherever. I, I think it's, like, really good. Yeah, I mean, like, like the paint job they give it, they had on the street for, like, the 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 studio photos and like on the store and stuff has it's a lot of tan and brown which you know definitely evokes like a tattooing theme but you know you could very easily just paint it up um all gray or you know with uh, some other colors you know and uh make it fit in and anywhere else i mean and even with the tan it like we said it still doesn't necessarily have to be Tatooine. Yeah. See, yeah, the, the, their paint makes it, it definitely looks like sort of more like a rural location. Yeah. But if you just take, get rid of that tan and make it all metallic or whatever, now it's going to look like a very industrialized mm-hmm. place. I don't know. I, I mm-hmm. think it's cool. Yeah, I, maybe I, the I like paint it. job would make a difference. For me, I I can't quite put my finger on it. I feel like it doesn't quite look Star Warsy to me. Something. It's the lack of moisture evaporators. <laughs> yeah, that must be it. But I feel like if I saw this out of context, I would be like, oh, that's some cool infinity terrain or something. You know what I mean? Like, I I wouldn't assume it was Star Wars if I just saw it on a table. But there's uh, a little Loth cat right there. That's the best thing I, about the core set is part of the terrain <laughs> has a tiny little Loth cat sitting on an astromech dome that's like buried in the dirt. I like that detail. And that's not even attached to the building, right? You can just put nope, that anywhere. Just this- it, it doesn't look like it is. I mean, in the yeah, picture, it looks it's like touching, in the, in a, yeah, and it looks like there's a couple of like crates and stuff too that aren't attached to anything that you'll be able to place around as well. I'm not sure if it's going to be functional in any way. Like, I don't because we don't know how cover works, but it seems pretty small <laughs> compared to the miniatures in the game. Well, judging by Legion, it's going to be if your mini is on the same table as the other mini, you have cover. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so other featured components, they've got a struggle tracker, which is the first big, like, this is not crisis protocol element. Um, they didn't go into too much detail of how that works, but there is basically this cardboard tracker that has some little like squares cut out where you have a cube that moves along this track, um, (laughs) some sort of momentum or balance of the force or struggle. Um, that changes throughout the course of play. Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to say. I wonder if it's going to be sort of similar to that the balance of the force mechanic in the uh, in the deck, the deck builder, builder game. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Like maybe you have abilities that say if the struggle is, if you're not struggling, <laughs> or maybe it's a uh, like abilities if that only kick in when real. you're losing. Um, it could be kind of interesting, like a catch-up mechanic. Yeah, that, that's something I, I have mentioned before. I like about Crisis Protocol is you when your dude gets knocked down, when he gets back up again, <laughs> um, he's got more powers usually, or different powers. Or when you get hit in Crisis Protocol, you like get power equal to the damage you took to spend on your abilities. So it's sort of like a mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to call it a catch-up thing, but it's definitely a soften the blow of getting dumped on by your opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could see there being a thing where it's like, you know, the more you... you It'd be funny if they call it the more you're struggling or whatever, but maybe you, you've got like... That's also sort of a heroic, cartoony type thing, too. Like, they don't bust out their coolest moves until, like, hope is almost lost. Right, yeah. Um, who knows if that's how it functions, but could be. Um, you know, the you cards take some smash until <laughs> the uh, cards are tarot size, which I think are the same size as the character cards from 
Crisis Protocol. The play space is three by three, which is same as Crisis Protocol. Yeah. Same as I saw. I remember there was some people dunking on them during the stream because they had they sh- when they were sort of showing the cards in in the box. People noticed that the battle droids had a Republic symbol on them, and people were like, "Oh no, another another f- expletive up from AMG." Um, but I think I believe they later clarified that to say that that wasn't a faction symbol; that that was an era symbol. Yes, okay. I saw which, that as which, well. Which, which then implies that in the future we'll be seeing things from other eras. You know, but if you can mix and match villains, why would you not also be able to just mix and match eras? Oh, I'm sure you will be able yeah. to, but I'm sure they will also have like gameplay modes that are like uh, you know. Oh, Republic sure. era only or special scenarios. Age of Rebellion. Yeah, yeah, depending yeah. on like the scenario or something. Yeah, it did look a little funny seeing the Republic symbol on the battle droid card. Or maybe it was a goof and they were like, oh, it's an era thing, and now they've gotta make other eras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd think if it you'd think you would just have like a the word for the era or something that uh, would make more sense than a symbol, because it's always going to be cool, a faction, though. right? Like, well, I will. S- I don't know. Uh, say in a, f- a lot of official stuff lately, I think internally and in like some publishing and stuff, the three, you know, it's not prequel, original, sequel. They call it Age of Republic, Age of Rebellion, and Age of Resistance. So using the Republic sy- symbol to symbolize the Age of Republic makes sense. Although you could use like the 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 logo from like the Senate or whatever, but I don't know. Yeah, but I, I mean, people aren't as familiar with that right. logo. I don't think. I mean, I mean, outside of like the 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 Star Wars CCG, um, to symbolize like like that was used for Republic units, um, in that game. Um, I can't think of another. Uh, thing where like that symbol was really widely used. Um, yeah, I don't think it was used in the Wizards of the Coast miniatures game, which had a lot of <laughs> different faction icons. Um, hmm. the, the, the struggle tracker coming. There more info coming out later. Um, I was noticing it says twenty three terrain pieces. So you know that's how many different chunks this playset thing breaks down into it also says 14 dice did did they show what the dice are is it special um, symbols or? The, well, on, the pre- just... on the pre-order page you can see yeah. there's a dice pack you can buy the dice separately mm, they're d6s okay. and d8s looks like uh there's just two types of dice so just the d6s have it's obviously going to be attack dice and defense dice. Yeah, it looks maybe. like it, I'm. Ass, yeah, I'm assuming the eight siders are the attack dice because they've got little like it, hit hit symbols look oh. that look almost just like the hit symbols from like X Wing and Legion. So it it is because on the back of it it says it's this pack contains eight attack dice and six defense dice. Hmm. So okay, defense is D sixes with symbols and attack. There it looks like there's. Three no, how many symbols am I seeing on attack? One, two, th- there's at least four different symbols on attack, and at least three different symbols on defense. Um Yeah, it looks like there's some kind of a hit and a crit. There's a like a ninja star with a lightning bolt in it, which is on both dice. And then, and then like there's like a, a like a diamond thing, which it seems like that's actually supposed to be on both dice. But it's like the diamond shape is sort of distorted on the D8s. Yeah, I, 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 I would know. read that as different symbols, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's sort of weird. I, I forget how the dice work in Crisis Protocol. Um, I, I like how they work. In there. Yeah, and then on the defense dice, there's also like a... Um, something like it's a circle with a circle inside it. So maybe that's that must be... I'm assuming it's some kind of a block or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and guess that the ninja star thing is a shatter point. It's like a shatter line going through. Oh it. my God. I'm call that oh my right God. now. That's my prediction. Someone, someone broke that ninja star. They shattered it. Everybody, they, someone read the shatter point novel about Mace Windu and they're like, 
this must be an entire mechanic in the game. Every character has mastered like the shatter point technique where you can, I don't remember. I never read the book. Just like touch a guy and like get the resonant frequency to like dismember him at the molecular level. <laughs> that's, that, that's what that I'm calling it. That's what that attack die does. You hit that. It's an insta kill dust. You're, um, okay. So that's about it. There will be, as we already knew, first demos are at Adepticon. So let's just look through each of the products. Um, so the core box, um, we already know what's kind Did of we just went over the all that's in it. Yeah, 165 yeah. buckaroos. So do it is more than we were expecting it to be, but do we think it's a fair price for what's in the box? I mean... Uh... If you go off the number of minis, it's, you know, a lot less than a Legion corset, for example. But it does come with the terrain, so I guess it kind of depends on... Oh, I mean, it's a lot less than... It's it's less minis than you get in a lot of, like, GW boxes and stuff, But the minis are bigger and more detailed. A little bit bigger. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say more detailed. I mean the you know the <laughs> GW sculpts are detailed as fuck these days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, they are. These are going to be bigger. Um. Uh, but yeah, I mean the big the big thing is the terrain. You you are getting a fairly decent chunk of terrain out of there. I mean, and if you look at then uh, there's that one of the terrain packs is the the high ground terrain which is pack, almost the same, maybe which is slightly different. Yeah, which is very similar to to the amount of terrain you get in the core box. Maybe maybe slightly less than what you get in the core box actually. Um, and that pack is eighty five bucks. So I mean. Going on that, like almost half of you know, like ha- half or more of the core boxes it prices in the terrain there. Now, do we think the average player is going to be like happy to have that train, or is it going to stay in the box because they're just going to use their friend's train or go to the game store or something? You know, that's I'm, a good I'm guessing point. There's some people who are going to be like. Why did I have to pay so much for this train? I'm not personally going to use it. I'm never going to paint it or whatever, right? You know, some people's can be great value for it though, because like if they want that terrain, it's a little I don't know. It's a, it's not how they would typically do it to include that in the core box. But uh, it well, I mean, it could also I mean maybe because one thing they've they've mentioned uh, in the past is that height and verticality are kind of going to be big parts of this rules and important to the gameplay. So it could be that they felt that it's important enough that they need to include some terrain Mm -hmm. in the core box. Um, You know, because not everybody who buys this is going to be going, um, you know, to a game store to play. They're going to be playing at home. Or maybe oh, the man. game store, you know, just has like little buildings or whatever. And they, you know, this is like the ideal type of verticality where it's like bridges mm-hmm. and catwalks and stuff. Yeah. I'm um, afraid that it will, you know, price it out of some people's price range that I, like yeah, for, way over a hundred, you know? I, you know, I mean, I don't disagree with you. I mean, you, you know, I am definitely... I haven't rushed to put in a pre-order at my uh, at my game store after hearing that price. I, you know, I've sat back and thought, you know, how much do I really need this? You know, um, I'm I'm at this point with that with that price point. I'm definitely going to wait until uh, I can see some videos for, of demos from Adepticon. Hear what Joe and Evan think of it after they get to play some demos at adepticon um what do you guys think of the the high ground terrain pack that it's 
seems... it's almost a little too similar to the core. Yeah, yeah it has the, that there's... one tall tower that's completely different, but a lot of the catwalks yeah. and things are really similar. yeah. And that's what, um, yeah, that's stuff. what I was gonna say. There's there's a, there, you you get this one tall tower, um, but then and then this one little rock with a one of those owls on it. Oh yeah, um, a convor. I was wondering. I couldn't tell what it was, but you're right. <laughs> but I like um, that. I like all the. I just give me that. Give me like a scatter train pack. That's just the bits that have the cute little like <laughs> reference animals on it. The ones um, for people like me who go, oh, it's the this thing. But other than that, yeah, the other all the other pieces are duplicates of stuff you get in the core box. At so it's like, I do I really want to pay? Um, you know like $80 after tax for what is 90% duplications of stuff that I will already have since I bought the core. Yeah. You I mean, know, if the assuming... walls were just a different style. It would be like, Oh, this is a completely different yeah. building and it would feel, you know? So one thing I did notice looking at this here. Um, is if you look on the back of the box for the high ground terrain pack, mm-hmm. um, well, I guess you can kind of see it on the front too. Oh, is it, it, you know, there's like, you can see that the door is at the top of the tower is open, but there's like a hole there. It's almost like a slot where you could maybe slide a door in there. So I wonder if some of these mm-hmm. other doors are, removable and you can go inside any of these mm. it's a terrain I don't know if you could because that door mm. is definitely not as wide as a base of the mini so <laughs> that's true <laughs> i feel like there might just be like a squeeze rule where you can move through it you just obviously can't end your movement yeah. in the doorway um but yeah for the for the most part i'm just sort of like i don't know i'm, I'm kind of baffled by the high ground pack it's seems a little uh redundant to me. Yeah, it seems like it would, you know, if that stuff wasn't in the core, you know what, there you go, it's perfect. Yeah. Because the yeah. if we can assume that, you know, this is 74 bucks, the stuff in the core maybe is adding another 40 bucks to the core. Like, if the core was only 100, 120 bucks, like, maybe that would change people from going, oh, I gotta think about it, to instant pre-order. I don't know. Uh-huh. That's, uh... What's so we got this train pack? There's the other train pack called Ground Cover. Take cover. Oh, there's yeah. a different name on the image and in the oh. title of the page. Yeah, this uh, the the box says take cover, but the store item says ground cover. Well, whatever it's uh-huh. called, it the best one. It, it looks a lot more interesting than the high ground. It's at least completely different. It's a lot of rocks and weird Generators. buildings. Yeah, they're kind of like shield generator. Yeah, they adjacent. look like the thing from a Star Destroyer. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, <laughs> but it, but it, like it, a... it's it's also like vague enough to where it could be anything. It could be like some sort of like, um, you know, like water pump. It could be a power generator. It could yeah. be whatever you want it to be. No, um, I'm full yeah, of Mountain Dew. <laughs> um, it comes with a little gonk droid, which is cool. That yeah. is really great. And a little it's like swoop, a swoop bike. bike. Um, yeah, I think this camp. looks like really good terrain. And, and then like a bunch of like rocks and stuff. Yeah. Um, like, like if you had to get one terrain, you're obviously going to get the take cover pack. Yeah. Once again, it's 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 uh, it's, it's 75 bucks. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like you're getting a little bit better value from this just because yeah, there's no redundancy. Yeah, the only thing I wish it would have is if it would have had just like if it would have had a catwalk in it, so you could use it to connect like this mm. one little building to your corset pieces. Well, just use one from the corset, and then one of your corset pieces won't be connected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if I want them all connected? That should be a catwalks um, pack. Yeah. Uh, Do we? I assume. I assume this terrain, these terrain boxes, do not come with any extra rules type supplements it's only terrain pieces right like how the legion rules ones comes with like a scenario uh the terrain ones come with like a scenario right um 
Not that I know of. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, there's nothing this. on the box or or in the yeah. like description in the store that would yeah. imply uh, that. So I I don't think so. Yeah, and that's fine. Uh, okay. Next thing we've got the hello there squad pack because memes um it's got obi-wan kenobi cody and then two 212 clone guys for 50 dollars for four minis yeah and um you know and like we were talking about this for 50 dollars like i just did a quick google search and i was able to like you know, everyone complains about GW prices, but I was there was like a, a box of like it was like ten or twelve Space Marines. I think it was ten Space Marines for fifty dollars. Um, so you got like ten Space Marines plus they all came with like extra. There was like extra heads and arms and shit, so you could kit them out differently. So mm-hmm. so you get. 10 plus you have and we'll have a whole pile of extra bits left over for future customization of shit or bits to use for kit bashing things um whereas based on my experience of buying some crisis protocol stuff i expect i will get just these four minis exactly as how they appear on the box um, and then I'll get about, you'll get about 30 bases. Uh, <laughs> in there. It does uh, also come with three unit stat cards. So the, uh, 212th guys apparently have to share a card, um, three stance cards, which is, you know, like probably, lightsaber styles or something. I was thinking more like political stances. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. Where, how does Obi Wan feel about legalizing marijuana? <laughs> this is libertarian Obi Wan versus <laughs> like progressive Obi Wan. And three order cards, which okay, who knows what that means? Is that does it have a some kind of way you got to issue orders like Legion? Does it? Is they, it like restaurant? They haven't talked about that on stream at all. No, they have not talked about any sort of gameplay. Okay, okay. (laughs) They haven't finished the rules yet. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to listen to everyone's speculation and then take the best ideas from Man, you know what? There better be at least optional helmet for... Because in the picture on the box, Cody doesn't have a helmet. He's just kind of posing on a rock, gun at his side casually, talking to his comm link. I I mean I would prefer to give Cody a helmet. I would also prefer him to be in more of a combat yeah. stance. It's the same thing with Rex in the uh um the corset. Yeah, he doesn't have a helmet either. I mean we do know Gar Saxon has at least two different pose options. So at least do some Where minis do. do. Yeah, you Where can see on the box he can, he has a shield in one picture and he has a gun and no helmet in the other picture. Oh, yeah. You're right, so, you're like, right. at least some minis do have customization, but, I mean, the rest I don't see any difference on, so maybe it's not that many of them. You well, would think at least the helmet, though, like you said. Yeah, I think... Uh, okay, I think it's probably safe to guess that the named clones will have helmet options. I, I do really like the look of these miniatures, and I'm well, excited I, to... You know, if, if we are able to do... At least a little, if we're able to do a little bit of like pose customization with some of these, you know, that's, that, that does change, you know, that's, that, that's a little bit value added. Um, yeah. For these guys then. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. $50 I I... seems high, but, but at the same time I try to divide it out and go, okay, what if it was each one as a separate expansion for twelve fifty? Would I buy that? And I'd be like, oh, maybe. Because I mean, like, how much yeah. is like an Imperial Assault single figure? Ten dollars? Right. Or how much is, you know, and these are a, a lot bigger. Freaking action figure, you know? Yeah. Um, I still think. I mean, these guys. It seems are... a little high, even though they are big, but it's not, I don't know. Yeah. They're big, know. they're big boys. Um, 
Um, yeah, we also there's also the Dooku uh, expansion pack, the Twice the Pride Squad pack. Coming was... out in, does it come out in June for Pride Month? <laughs> June second. Yeah, Twice the Pride yeah. Month this year. Um, uh, yeah, Dooku, Django, and a couple Magna Guards in that pack. Yeah, and these look cool. Those Magna Guards look great. I mean, I want. Django and Magna Guards and Dooku. Um, Although their I'm not cloaks the are not as hole filled as as I would yeah, like. Yeah, their 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 cloaks <laughs> are a lot more uh, off the assembly line. <laughs> yeah, this box also comes with three stat cards, three stance cards, and three order cards. So each character must have an order card that's unique to them, or it could the order cards could just be like I, I think in. Crisis Protocol, you have a hand of cards that are similar to how the command cards in Imperial Assault worked. It's kind of a hand of like cards that you can play when a specific criteria is met to go, okay, and then I do this. It's like, oh, at the start of the round, you could do this. Or when one of your guys takes X number of damage, you could play this card or whatever. It's sort of like very situational cards that do thematic and unexpected things. Well, let's see what else is there. We've already kind of talked about the dice pack. Not really anything else to say there, I don't think. Um, there is a set of measuring tools in there. Um, I looks like think they... They're rain, looks like they're, they're, you know, like numbered like two, three, four, five for... Yeah. Um, it, they look identical to Crisis Protocol range with just different decoration. The decorations are very cool. The five has a DL-44 shooting. Four looks like lightning. Three's got like a thermal detonator being tossed. And then two has lightsabers. Um, and if you're unfamiliar, in Crisis Protocol, the range one is basically the width of any of those range tools, which is why there's no range one stick. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the way they're painted in this image. Obviously, they're probably just going to be playing gray plastic, but they, yeah, yeah, like they. I mean, yeah, they just sort of like uh, just sort of painted them like a dark gray, and then dry brushed like silver over top of that. Just yeah, it ended up looking great. A very like yeah, I think you said. Did you say carbonate look? Yeah. So, what's more interesting to me is there are the movement tools which look similar to the movement tools from crisis protocol two of them do and like legion where it's just kind of a the one on the joint there's an arrow with some slashes through it and on the longer one there's an arrow without slashes through it who knows if that means anything there's also some nice little decorations of uh i don't know who that's supposed to be it looks like two jedi on the longer one and then r2 but there what what do you make of this other tool there's a tool that does not bend at all it looks almost like a box cutter yeah yeah it's got like two sort of like angled ends i think people have sort of speculated that it's it's so it's got a uh the same symbol on it as what like the the shorter movement tool right i i'd, I'd look but their fucking website's being so slow right yeah now, it's not what I... <laughs> um yeah but yeah, if I remember right, it's got the same well, symbol as the shorter tool, right? The the that, shorter like tool, arrow. the arrow, the arrow, like the tail of it comes to a point, whereas this one's square. But it is an arrow with lines through the. Yeah, and then so a, so yeah. people have speculated. I think it's some sort of like height, you know, mm. measuring tool. Like like you set like the one flat end on the table, and then the the other flat end is sort of the top of the height measurement. And then I, I think it's supposed to be at an angle because it'd be like, this is equal to like a speed move, the same speed of move as like that shorter movement tool, since they got the same symbol, but but adding verticality into it. And then... I don't understand. Why couldn't you just put the shorter tool straight off the table? Uh because if you're if you're moving vertical, you can't also move as far laterally. Oh, you're saying this is if you're like trying to jump because you're moving horizontally and vertically. Yeah. And so this is slowing down your horizontal movement by giving. Yeah. You, okay, that makes sense. 
Yeah, it's like it's like how like the you know the hypotenuse of a triangle is shorter than the other two sides put together. Yeah. My question about the movement tool, whatever pack, and the dice pack are, I mean, like in Crisis Protocol, did anyone feel like they needed a second set? Like Legion, people buy extra dice sometimes because you can roll some big pools, right? But for this game, are you going to need those at all well i'm assuming they're going to be for people who are going to say like well i don't want to run any of the characters in the core box so i'm just going to buy you know an obi-wan squad pack Mm -hmm. and some movement tools and some dice yeah it feels like a product that won't be relevant until more content is out but because you know they've already manufactured these things for the core they have the product to put out. Hmm. But wouldn't you need the mission card and the nine struggle cards and the struggle token and the 16 momentum tokens and the struggle tracker from the core set? I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll possibly, (laughs) I mean, I don't know. We don't have the rules yet. (laughs) They put out a essentials kit for Legion that basically has all that stuff. They did that for crisis protocol. It stands to reason that eventually they would put out a, okay, you you really don't want to buy the core. Here's a little box that has these things. But I guess that would include these movement tools. Oh, there it's finally loaded. Okay, now I can. Oh, these are actually really cool, these uh, maneuver tools. I wonder if those are painted or if they. they, they I feel like they must come like that if they show it like that. Well, Well, they they show the minis minis painted. painted. Yeah. So those are uh, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure when so when cool. you when you saw them on the in the um, the unboxing, they were not painted. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're still. Yeah, that's like one of the symbols. Like in pre- Crisis Protocol, painting your movement tools is like another. It's a lot more fun to paint those than it is to paint like Legion tools. They're also like not flat. Is there's like a weird notch at the bottom? corner of each one i don't quite understand what that is for it almost looks like is that supposed to be like a silhouette if i look at it from a profile view is it gonna show me someone's face but i don't know yeah there is like um what kurt's saying yeah if you put a range ruler and just laid it flat on the table and stuck your eye on the table it's not flush there's like a little you know chunk that some like a like a mouse chewed out so you could, you know, like blow some sand underneath it or whatever. And it's the same on each one. Yeah. Maybe that's just like the logo on the back. It says like <clears throat> Star Wars Shattered Point or something. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but it's a cost cutting strategy. They save millions of dollars by not using that specific plastic in their product. Oh, yeah. I see the exacto knife thing, too. That's weird. It's because it's not like flat on the edge it's at an angle it's very strange very strange but it's i you know what i'm not even joking it's cool because when you got weird proprietary tools for your game you feel cool that's why custom dice are cooler than normal dice i think it's for like that's interesting shanking (laughs) someone who's too good so i guess I, i i haven't played and a game of Crisis Protocol yet. I I do have the core set, but I haven't even bothered to read the rule book or anything. Um, it's interesting. The movement tools are only rounded to like fit up against a base on one end and not the mm, other, mm-hmm. both ends. Yeah, and then the arrow points a, a certain way, mm-hmm. I guess. That's not R two D two. That looks like Chopper to me. Um, don't you think that's Chopper? Actually, it does kind of look like it's definitely a flat top. Yeah, look like the little it might be things chopper. sticking up. <coughs> yeah, that's yeah, cool. Best game of the year if that cool is Chopper. Game. Chopper confirmed. Uh, it's going to be Wave 2. We called it here first. First of the Rebellion era units. I mean, what if this game just really prioritizes animated characters? Which I wouldn't like have a problem with that, but that would be funny. Where it's like, okay, here's... Rebels and Resistance and Bad Batch. Boy, and I can't. Ewoks. I can't wait to run my Dooku Kaz. 
Um, and maybe well, we'll even do like High Republic. That would be cool. That would be amazing. That would be amazing, but it would also require us to like, you know, High Republic just doesn't exist outside of books. <laughs> well, this is their opportunity. Man. If they add Chopper to this game before they add him to Legion or add High Republic stuff, then this game beats Legion. Gosh, this exacto knife thing is so Friendship weird. Friendship with so Legion ended. Um, I keep so looking what? at this. Sorry to like mm-hmm. keep going off on a tangent on this, but there's like an arrow along the one end that points like it looks like you would stand this tool on end, kind of like Leo was saying, but it's like angled forward slightly, and you have to like point with the arrow like which direction you're jumping or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Mm. Anyways, go ahead. Um. I was going to say now one thing that has been uh, it was actually leaked like they 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 didn't intend to announce it but it showed up on a like a Polish uh, store's website um, was that as a pre-order bonus um, from at least from retailers who are participating in the Hobby Next uh, program with Asmodee. Um, with pre-orders of the core set, you will get a copy, an early release copy of uh, a Padawan Ahsoka. Uh, the, um, the mini and the card that goes with it. Yes. What you get. So, so the so this is a different unit than the Ahsoka that's in the uh, in the core, core box. The core box uh, Ahsoka is like a Siege of Mandalore Ahsoka. Um, whereas, uh, this, so the, so this one's, uh, actual Padawan, not the, not, not tube top Ahsoka, but the, 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 the one after that, the, the outfit she has after that one. George Lucas is like, Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> um, the weird thing is, is, so this is not, um, uh, like a pre-order exclusive mini, there's not any like alternate art pre-order alternate art that's exclusive on the card. Um, nothing like that. Um, it's just, they, they said there's going to be an Ahsoka, a Padawan Ahsoka is going to be coming out as part of a squad pack. Some point within a year after the core sets release. Um, and this is just giving people who pre-order the core set early access to this one unit. Uh, but it's a little weird to me because uh, since she's going to be in a squad pack, that means you're going to have to just get another Ahsoka if you ever want to have whatever else she comes with in her squad pack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's less... I it is weird that this is the first one of these hobby next promos that's not like a it's not unique to this promo. It's just something you if you miss out on this bonus, don't worry about it. You'll be able yeah, to get this thing later. Just but wait a few months. I don't think it's as like strange because I'll buy the Ahsoka box later and then just like I don't, I'm going to get a, if you pre-order it and you get it, it's just a free mini. It's not like if you had to pay extra for it, then it would seem really weird, but it's, I don't know, it's a Mm -hmm. free mini. Then if I have an extra Ahsoka later, I don't know, give it to somebody else or just save it for parts or. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it is just free. It just, I don't know. It just is a little weird how, like it would be less weird if if they had like single character packs rather than squad packs. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. I wonder if all the squad packs going forward are going to be like four minis or four plus, or if there'll be some that are two or one or whatever. And it, it'll probably depend on also like the size of the particular 
minis too. And um, I wonder if they wouldn't have like some more thematic type ones, like like Bad Batch. Maybe maybe the whole Bad Batch would come in one box. You know, right. I mean, you maybe wouldn't be able to run the whole Bad Batch necessarily. I don't know. We have no idea how exactly how points or how many units you're going to be able to run yet. Um, but I would I would assume you're not going to be able to play like all like what the uh, the core box comes with, what, seven units per side or I guess seven for the Republic and and eight mini eight units for the. It's not not really the separatists, just the bad guys. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming you're not going to be able to run all of those at once. Maybe you are. I don't know. Also, on the point of mix and matching good guys and bad guys, if it is like Crisis Protocol, we can assume there will be certain like... Because in Crisis Protocol, you can have people do whatever. But there are cards that say like Avengers and it has a list of units that fit into that. And so if everybody on your team matches that affiliation, there is some sort of like team bonus. Um, Oh yeah, for sure. So there are like list building incentives to be thematic, um, almost like, like a micro version of Legion's battle forces. Um, where it's like, just like one ability that your whole team gets if they all fit this, squad but um that that seems likely to me like there might be like a Mm -hmm. like oh 501st or republic or whatever what are i think we've covered all of the products that are up for pre-order i don't think none of us have pre-ordered it yet have we no No. i i think i'm I'm, like i said i'm kind of waiting for uh this to hear what the word out of adepticon ends up being um, I know that my local store is part of the Hobby Next program, so I, if I do decide to pre-order, I'll probably be ordering through them just so I can get that Ahsoka. Yeah, when I know a, a store in town that does that, so like, I'm not gonna say no to a free mini if I can get that one. Um, Especially when I, you're only paying 165 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Uh, I haven't pre-ordered yet. I figured I'd, I'll wait until after. Adepticon. There's no rush. It's not like there's going to be a shortage of these things. Unless they say, well, we only have 10 of these Ahsoka minis. Yeah, I mean, each store is going to get, will get a limited number of them. So, right. I, so that's one thing. I was probably going to check with my store and just say like, hey, do you know yet how many you're getting? Um, and they, so they may not know yet because this was not technically planned to have been announced yet so kind of sounds like a lot of like uh asthma day reps and stuff weren't even aware um so uh, like some stores were asking about it and then being told that no there is no pre-order bonuses that they know of um Hmm. so um so yeah so i'm gonna follow up with my store at some point and see if they if they know and if it seems like they're getting a ton of them, I'm not going to worry about it. If uh, uh, they aren't going to get too many, um, on it, I've, I've got a pretty good relationship with my store, though. I'll probably be able to say, like, hey, I'm like 90% probably going to pre-order this. Is there a chance you could set one aside for me? And then if I change my mind, just then you can release it to someone else. I think the greatest mystery of Shatterpoint is how does that movement tool work? (laughs) (laughs) And all the other rules, what the cards are like, what you do on your turn. What's the struggle mechanic? (laughs) No, I only care about that movement thing. Um, Overall, since its announcement, hype level increased, decreased, or about the same for Star Wars Shatterpoint? Uh, I think the the price deflated my hype a bit. Um, 
for sure. Uh, I, I'm definitely a lot less excited about it uh, than I was, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, on the other hand, I just got a raise at work today. So, Ooh. so that might, <laughs> so, so we'll see here. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe that will help restore my hype for, uh, uh, Shatterpoint. I think for me, I need to know more about the rules, you know, just going off of the boxes. Like, I don't think I'm as into the sculpts as a lot of people. Um, but if the rules sound really cool and fun, that will be what brings me around. Yeah. I think I'm about the same. I still really like the look of the, the sculpts and I think maybe my hype went up by 2% because of the little Easter eggs in the terrain packs of the Convoy, the Lothcat and the Gong Droid. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I mean, it's those little things where it's like, Hey, it's, that Star Wars from the, the animated thing. So it's like, okay, I mean, that's fun for me. Not like a selling point, but it is something that like cheered me up when I saw it. So um, you buy the core box and you throw everything away except the, <laughs> the loath cat or whatever. Yeah, there there'd be some other stuff. I hope I I hope that you know sometime before release here, you know, maybe even before Adepticon, it'd be kind of nice if we got some more detailed looks at. You know, like we noticed, yeah, obviously, there's some different pose options for Gar Saxon. Um, you know, what about for any other units? I, you know, I'd like to see, you know, a, a little bit more detailed breakdown of, you know, what we're going to be getting on our sprues. Yeah, we know there, I, there, there should be some more articles coming before Adepticon, but I don't <clears throat> remember if they said exactly what to expect in those. Well, we do have plenty of time to learn more at least because it is still listed as a June 2nd release date currently. Yeah. So yeah. if turns out I need to hurry to secure that little Ahsoka, I'll go do that because I mean, even unless I think it's horrible at Gen Con, I'll get at minimum the core set, even if, like even if I'm like meh on the game, I'll probably still get the core set. <laughs> but so I'm almost just, certainly just get... to own every Star Wars game. Yeah, somebody send me a core set for Armada because I still don't have any Armada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The only other random detail I want to comment on is, I think this is the first Star Wars game box where they've like enhanced or like touched up. The minis with fancy little CGI. So if you look on the back of the core set, the lightsabers are glowing and the rocket boosters are glowing and the little computer hologram things are glowing. I don't know. Kind of false advertising. <laughs> You're leading I noticed me to believe that, too. that there's LEDs. <laughs> no. I noticed it's that fine. too. I thought that was uh, actually kind of cool. It makes it look cool. It makes it look cool. Uh gonna disagree on that one i thought it was real hokey when i saw it <laughs> maybe add some lens flares like really make it pop make it animated oh make hey, it you know lenticular you, make do, the... you can see on the back of the box there on the bottom the rex on the bottom of the box does have his helmet on versus Ooh, the yeah you're right so so yeah so yeah for sure they're rex there that's definitely another pose option for rex Good. I mean, I guess it not necessarily pose option because he's like in the exact same pose and stuff. Just you know, you can at yeah. least choose between helmet or no helmet. Yeah, I prefer the helmets. I wonder. It'd be kind of cool if if he if you had the choice between his like because doesn't he doesn't he have two helmets? Like he's got his phase one helmet and his like phase one and a half sort of helmet. Yeah, didn't the didn't the Legion mini give you options for both of those? I forget because yeah. I never. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it did. Okay, well, I think that covers it. Uh, hop over on our Discord, which you can find a link to at jodocast.com, and tell us how you feel about Shatterpoint, because I think there's still a lot of mixed feelings about this game floating around out there, especially in our little 
community that tends to play more Legion. Um, but it could all change once we get more information. Right, because I've said it before, I think Crisis Protocol is a very fun game, and I'm, you know, I don't need another competitive game, so if this isn't mm -hmm. that, that's fine with me. Um, but, uh, go shatter some points, kids. <laughs>